<laughs> figured it out in the end. Well, Hi, Swell. How are you? Good, man. How's it going? Good, good. Not too bad. Sorry, I'm, I haven't done too many of these lives, so I don't know how to join. So. No worries. Always, yeah, as long as you keep scoring runs, and I think uh, that side of this is, is sorted. I think no one will care whether the technical glitches come in or not. <laughs> How is it going with you? Where are you at the moment? I think that's something that all of India and all of the world would love to know because uh, uh, you know that's on everyone's mind. Are you all safe and sorted in terms of the mind yes, and sir. body as well? Yeah, yeah. God's been kind, and uh, me and my family are in Bangalore. Just um, you know, we've all been safe, and uh, yeah, I'm just trying to do whatever I can with my. In terms of training and in terms of keeping busy and stuff, yeah, it's, it's been okay actually. I haven't been um, um, too bored or uh, haven't really got to a place where it's just annoying me. So it's it's still good, yeah. I'm hanging in there and trying to do what I can. How nice is that feeling, Dale? In some sense, I know it's it's you know nice is a hard word to say at this point, but how nice is it for you personally to get that break as well? Because you had a really really busy couple of years, so. In a way, it just gives you time with your family, with your dog as well. Does Simba de-stress yeah. you at a time like this? Um, I wish he did. He's he's, he's quite <laughs> the lazy lazy one. Uh, but um, yeah, it is it is quite nice to uh, spend time at home. And I remember uh, when we kept playing for so long, we we in the team, all of us kept wanting a break. And now that we've got such a big break, we um, we're kind of um, you know. We're like, why did why did we get such a long break? We didn't need this break. But I guess uh, um, that's what this time is teaching all of us that there are more important things in life, and you know, being healthy is the most important. And um, yeah, we um, I think I'm I'm quite enjoying it and uh, being at home, spending time with my family. I got to spend my birthday with my family after a long, long time. So um, you know, that's that's special. And just being at home, yeah. It's, so you, know, good, you, good you spoke about keeping busy as well, and a lot of people, you know, see your workouts and see the athleticism behind you, Kale. Okay? But what about the mind? I mean, how do you keep the mind engaged at a time like this? Because as you said, there's a part of you that's just waiting to go. You had an ODI hundred just coming into the break as well, so you're feeling on top of your game. What's the the mindset like coming into a, a freeze phase like this? Um, look, uh, I mean, we all know that uh, it's a very difficult phase, and there's not much we can do physically. Uh, uh, having said that, I think it's a good time for for players or for sportsmen or for just people in general to just uh, sit back and reflect on on you know on, on on things. For me, especially, I can talk about myself. I've just been sitting and doing some homework. I've been watching some videos from the past and uh, seeing what are the things I was doing right, where I can improve, and um, yeah, just watching um, cricket and and like I said, just trying to improve on things that I feel. Um, you know, I need to improve. I mean, there's always scope for improvement. I know I scored a hundred in the last innings, but you know, when I get back, it's going to be different. I'm not going to be. Um, yeah. I hope I'll be in the same form, but you <laughs> never know with uh, with with sports. So you know, just trying to be as ready and as prepared as possible, and just giving myself. Uh, uh, you know, just trying to recreate the match situation, or you know. In my head right now, I'm like, okay, what if yeah. the World Cup begins or the IPL begins? What do I yeah. need to do? And like you said, uh, captaincy is something that I'm doing for the first time. So you know, um, reading, uh, reading my own players, understanding what their strengths are. So I'm trying to do all that, all that homework, and you know, that that kind of keeps me busy. And it's it's a good challenge, um, you know, in a player's career to progress. This is a good progress from being a player to you know getting the leadership role. It, it, um, it's exciting, so you know I'm trying to do whatever homework I can. Yeah, we're going to get to that that phase as well. And you spoke of it, you know, the progress and the progress in your career has been phenomenal, KL. So let's just take you back a bit. I think uh, there's a nice memory when we go back to your debut, uh, just after your debut in, in Test cricket as well. That that debut series, I mean, it was a tough start for you at the MCG in front of the the bickering fans uh, in, in Australia in some sense. But then you got a phenomenal hundred in Sydney. Just talk us through that moment because. It must have been special at an iconic venue in Australia, in the world, really. To go score 100, was that the moment you you sort of sensed you belonged to Test cricket? Because you went on to then score 100s in Sri Lanka, West Indies, and so on. Of course, yeah. I think that innings, that series, just just um, changed the way I looked at myself. Uh, the confidence that I got uh, from bouncing back so quickly and at a stage, um, you know, at an international level where where you know. It's obviously a dream for every player, but to go on, fail, and bounce back so early just gave me lots and lots of confidence as a player and also as a as a person. You know, I, I realized that 
you know, if if I put my mind to it, there are things that um, that I can achieve that even I've never thought I can achieve. So that innings did give me a great deal of confidence, and it just changed who I was as a person, as a cricketer, and the way I looked at sport and everything. So it was it's very special, and it's 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 funny. It, it's it's still very fresh, you know, more than the Sydney hundred. Yeah. The MCG, the first test, the the things that I uh, went through emotionally and um, you know what I was thinking while I was in the middle is something. It's still fresh. So every time before I go out onto the uh, onto the pitch, it's something that's in my head. So you know I never want to feel like that again. So uh, you know I keep reminding myself about what were the reasons uh, why I couldn't do well, and then yeah. you know try to try to. Do what are the uh, try to do things that I did well in the next inning. So you know, try to I just try to remember these basic things, and it just really helps me get into that zone. Yeah, you know, we're talking about the mind behind here in this series. Uh, we spoke to Kahiso uh, a couple of days ago, and you know, we were telling him uh, that we were going to chat with you, and he said he's going to challenge you at the PlayStation as well. But you know, we're talking about the mind more than anything, and you spoke of it, right? A moment like that is so fresh. In your memory, can you sort of take us back to the the night before your test debut? What were the the butterflies doing in your stomach at that point? Did you get a good night's sleep? Do you remember not sort of all, the preparation? All, man. I, I remember. I remember that all all five uh, nights of the test match, I didn't sleep. I don't think I slept more for more than an hour or two hours because you know you're so you're so nervous. You're so eager to get onto the field. There's yeah. so many emotions going through you and. Before Plus the Boxing Day Test match, right? Yeah, plus the Boxing Day Test match, and I remember every uh, the crowd didn't make it, uh, didn't make it easy, and you know, and that's that's the beauty of sport when you travel, and especially to Australia, it's, it's a very um, uh, competitive place. Even the people who are not in the ground are so competitive, and the the, the crowd just keeps keeps making it harder and harder for you. So um, you know, just having played. My first international, first two international games in a place which is considered to be the toughest place to go and play cricket, um, yeah. and to have, um, in a way, um, you know, achieved what I wanted to getting a hundred. Maybe on debut would have been even more memorable and sweeter, yeah. but still getting a hundred in 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 one of the test matches was very special. So having done that, I think, uh, you know, the the lessons that I learned from there and. How to handle the pressure? How to keep calm in in such situations? And all those lessons were very, very, uh, uh, very, very special and very important um, at at such an early stage in my career. You know, you mentioned missing out on a, a hundred, perhaps in the uh, in the Test debut arena, but you didn't have to wait long to get a debut hundred KL because a year and a half later, well, a little little later really, but a year and a half later, ODI debut versus Zimbabwe, got a hundred chasing 169. When did you think? In that chase, that the hundred was on the cards, and how special was that? Because you were the first Indian ever to score an ODI hundred on debut, and you didn't know it at the time, did you? No, I didn't. I mean, uh, um, look, uh, I came into that series with with uh, with a lot of confidence. I did well in the IPLs, and before the IPL and stuff, I had some um, some injuries, and you know, after my Sydney Sydney Test, um, I had to, I think. I still had to struggle to get into the team for a bit. Uh, with injuries, I went uh, in and out, and then you know, um, I think we had a settled senior opening pair. So, and they were doing well. So even after getting that, yeah. I had to yeah. still wait for my chances. So just uh, being away, being uh, not getting the, uh, not getting those chances, just you know, um, keeps you on your toes. And I wanted, I had that fire in me to. Um, you know, whenever I get the opportunity to keep doing well, and yeah, with injuries as well, you know, you you're just away from the game for so long. You you just want to go go out uh, to the ground and give it your best and keep performing as much as you can and be as consistent as you can. So I went into that uh, series um, with confidence from the IPL, and uh, yeah, I mean, I just you know I was hitting the ball well. I kept batting, and I think around when I was 75 or 78 is when. You know, um, I think I needed uh, I needed the same amount of runs as uh, as the team. You know, if yeah. I needed thirty runs, runs for for my hundred, even the team needed thirty runs. So I was like, this is not going to happen. And uh, Raidu was batting with me, and he was also batting at fifty. So 
you know me being the youngster i didn't want to tell him to slow down or uh, you know it was it was a very uh, it would have been a very weird conversation so i didn't bring it up but um, uh, very nice of raidu to uh, he came up to me and he said you know this is possible just you know go try to get a 100 if you get out it's fine so you know i'll i'll just look to rotate the strike and just keep you on strike as much as i can so and then i took my chances and remind you of that when you guys face face each other at the ipl any time uh no not really so I mean, of you at some point. no i i i am very um, um, thankful and i remember that and um, i'm sure yeah. uh, you know um, i keep telling uh, raidu whenever i meet him as well so um, yeah he's been he's a good good partner to play with in that first first innings of mine because he, he was experienced and he's played cricket for a long long time so just to have a partner who's experienced and it was a very young team i don't think a lot of uh, a lot of the senior senior players came on that tour so yeah nice to have a partner who just kept me calm and you know just let me play my shots you know i just want to understand kl just going into your mind a bit more to understand how you channel that nervous energy or you know the anxiety of coming into a series and wanting to do well obviously a lot of players only get one shot at it at times you know and yeah. you come in first match want to impress and you actually put the runs on the board and perform how do you convert that that nervousness or that energy uh, that's sort of sitting within you into actually a performance um i don't think that nervous energy uh, ever leaves you no matter how many games you play um i think it's always always there when you um go go to represent your country and uh, um and yeah i think the more you play the more you realize that you you need to give yourself that extra bit of time and once once you've spent that time in the middle the the nervous energy the 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 anxiousness of you know doing something for for the team that just leaves you and then slowly you get in control of of yourself and of the game so it's important what i keep telling myself what i keep reminding myself each time i go out onto the field is to is to play uh the game at my pace and not be rushed by the opposition or not be rushed by the by by what is happening around so you know i always try to remember to just you know gather my thought breathe and just remain calm as much as i can and try to spend you know spend like 5 or 10 minutes first and then start thinking about uh, you know what i need to do obviously before you go on to the field you have a rough idea of what you yeah. want to achieve on that day but um that's that that's in the back of the mind but as soon as you go i i try to give myself a little time just get used to it and like you said the nervous energy just you know it kind of leaves you so you you have to be patient and wait for it to go away and then you start to um express yourself and just play to the play according to what your team require uh, wants you to do you know it's funny kel as you've seen sort of the game itself progress over the last few years T20 cricket's become so much more professional you know there's there's so much more attention on that format as well but the preparation is is it the same going into a test into an ODI into a, a T20 do you plan versus particular bowlers what's your sort of uh, your mindset going in but also how do you guys plan in say team meetings or you personally with a batting coach going in um look i think in terms of like um skill preparation there's not a lot we do differently um yeah. skill wise we still try to keep it the same uh, but in terms of mental preparation i think uh, it changes from from format to format and also uh, like you said where we are playing who we are playing and according to that is what the team meetings uh, team meetings happen and then you also as players you sit down and i mean more or less you know who you're playing against and what their strengths are so now if i play south africa i know what uh, kg yeah. uh kg strengths and strengths are or where he's going to try to get me out and how i need to tackle his good balls um so that's what you think if it's a test match but if it's a t20 you 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 think how do i put the bowler under pressure where can i score off him so these are these are um a little work like homework that you do before the game and you you put all these options in your in your mind before the game and then when you go you go on to the middle and then you just um not hope but i mean um yeah in in a way hope that your preparations were right and your body will make the right call uh yeah. when yeah. when the pressure is on you so um that's how we look to train we also look to train the mind when we are practicing as well we try to visualize i mean 
say for instance if um, i'm in the nets and i'm playing uh, one of the bowlers i will i will try to picture him as the opposition bowler and try right. to you know tackle him and you know just so just so your body and your mind gets used to being in that in that position uh, so yeah these are few things i think we do but again um, i've also learned that keeping things simple as simple as possible is is the best thing to do and just remain in the present and just go to the ground and then um you know just just react to what has yeah. been thrown at you that also has worked for me sometimes but yeah i mean it's still uh, it'll always be a process of figuring out what works best for you and i don't think any player will ever reach that place where he knows exactly what to do i mean that's the i think that's the fun of life and fun of fun of sport then that fun yeah. of zen sport yeah you know it's funny because you said you you want to be able to go out there in the middle and execute your plans right but we're a country of 1.2 billion indians uh, there's there's a lot of pressure that you know is on you as well yeah. and we're not the we're not the quietest bunch either when it comes to uh, us as as a country so how do you put all of that aside kid how do you put that noise away how do you put that interference away and find your zone when you're out in the middle because that's something all sportsmen speak of right being in the zone yeah i think i think once you're in in the ground once i mean for me at least when i'm doing my skill especially like when i'm batting i put on the helmet and i'm in the middle after i've played like five or six balls i think the noise kind of just just fades away and then you look at the scoreboard you talk to your partner and your your mind starts thinking about what we need to do to uh, win this game for the team and yeah. that becomes the most important thing and this um hardly i mean it's it's i don't know if it this makes sense or it it explains anything but there is there is silence even when there are 100000 yeah. people screaming at you there's still there's still a quiet you can still um, yeah i remember you know, talking to justin langer and he was talking about white noise and you sort yeah. of feel this white noise within yeah. you yeah yeah but um, i mean yeah like you said it is it is a you know we 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 are a huge country and people do have opinions i think off the field yeah. certain times it does uh, get to you because end of the yeah. day we are still human beings and you'd be it's not the nicest thing to hear somebody um saying bad things about you or, yeah. or or criticizing you it's never it's never easy but again it's part of the job you learn to um i've learned to take it um in a positive way you know every time somebody criticizes you um there's something to learn as a as a person i mean i mean nobody's uh, <laughs> nobody has anything against me so all all they're trying to do is try to uh, make sure that i'm more consistent for my team and maybe that's why they criticize me and that's that's how i've started to look at look at um, um people commenting or criticizing and I'll, yeah. i'll look to learn from it and and you know try to use that that energy into you know training harder or or uh, you know batting extra and working hard and when i'm in the middle and when i'm tired and you know i try to use this energy to to push myself and prove uh, prove people wrong you know it's it's funny because everyone sees the final output when you're out in the field they, they sort of judge you by your last innings in some sense but you know as you said social media can be a, a double edged sword you know you you've got the media that can be on your side or or be on your back when you have one bad run you know i i know it affects a player and a player's mindset at times and it's hard to put away but how much does it also affect the people in your support system your family your you know your sister or your parents and and stuff like that how much does does that affect them too i think i think that's uh, they're the people who get affected the most and when as players when you see that your family is getting hurt yeah. is when um you start to react or you start to feel bad because we as players or or we as people have learned like you said that it's white noise it doesn't affect anything i mean the people talking are not they're not the people uh, working for us or they're not the people uh, uh paying us they're not the people who are doing the work for us we what um what i do is what you know at the end of the day i will i will get what i deserve so you you kind of learn to shut that noise off but um sometimes it's hard on the family and we expect them to understand and and to a large you know they they do understand too but i'm i'm i guess you know they it it affects them more than it affects us and then in a way it just affects us after a while so yeah yeah just you know there's nothing i don't think um is going to change but yeah i'm i'm hopeful that people 
people uh, will realize that end of the day we are uh, people as well we we're trying hard we we do the best we can we are the people um, you know having sleepless nights working ourselves um for 8 hours 10 hours a day sometimes staying away from family and um, you know going through all of that and it's it's it gets lonely it's you know now yeah. these people are there for that they're making them smile at the end of the day that's the the funny part right because they exactly. want yeah. some joy also yeah yeah also any time anybody asks me that's all i can say that you know before you comment about a player's performance or about him just just think about uh, put yourself in his shoes for for a for for a couple of seconds and see what it's like to be that person so yeah but again like i said we 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 draw energy from the negativity yeah you know i'm going to take a, a break away from digging into your mind give your brain a bit of a, a breather and take a few uh, audience and fan questions as well we had awesome. some nice ones coming in earlier uh, and one that's pretty apt from priya about the times today what time are you waking up these days kl <laughs> what time are you getting to bed because i think this is this is a big one that everyone's struggling with at the moment routine um yeah i mean look we we don't have this luxury otherwise sometimes we have to wake up early for training so um yeah right now i i don't set an alarm honestly when i wake up is when i wake yeah. up and when your dog uh, comes on you basically uh no he doesn't but even otherwise <laughs> i mean you know whenever i wake up i wake up so um trying to get 10 or 11 hours of sleep i try to you know i i don't try honestly you know otherwise yeah, sometimes yeah. you have to force yourself to sleep when you're playing because you know you you know that your body needs 8 or 9 hours of sleep to perform at its best so um yeah you force yourself to sleep now i i'm not trying to do any of that sometimes i go to sleep at 12 sometimes i go to sleep at 1 so there's there's no routine honestly and yeah i mean for for a for a while i did um i did feel like you know oh damn you know i'm a sportsman i need to have a routine yeah. what is happening and then i realized that you know it's 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 time to just switch off for a bit and it's yeah. okay to just not have a routine it's okay and i think um you know we we need to stop being so um controlling of ourselves and just yeah let let go and just be yeah i i noticed you've been playing a little bit of basketball as well have you watched uh, the last dance yet mm, uh no i'm i w- i was going to start it uh, this evening but then um i'll start it now after after yeah. your i asked you watch an episode just yeah. before we got got on it's it's well worth a watch i mean if you're an mj yeah, fan yeah. which i'm sure anyone who watches basketball has been at some I think point any any for any sports lover i think it will yeah, be yeah. Like, great show to watch yeah. yeah okay moving on to swati and this is a this is a fun one because i guess there was so much talk about this for like a year year and a half i remember everywhere the, the talk of where is kl rahul going to bat is always a topic what's your favorite batting position kl come on uh i mean i grew up being an opening batsman i'm not trying to be diplomatic it's where yeah. i'm i'm most um comfortable and or it's a place where i feel like i know what to do exactly uh but i'm also a person that you know needs needs a challenge and having yeah. to bat at different positions is is challenging for me and i'm i'm quite enjoying it and i'm i'm in a place where i want to win games for my for my team for my country it doesn't matter where i bat so yeah, yeah. that is That's the fine. honest truth uh, moving to tarshini and she wants to know if you could change the result of any match in the past which game would you choose that's a nice question actually um yeah world cup semi final yeah yeah it doesn't yeah. no i how, how, if you ask how gut wrenching was that one sorry how how gut wrenching was that how tough was that one to swallow um especially very, given that it went on for two days right very very i mean um i think most of us is still you know um still not um, over over that loss it just still haunts us sometimes and um, yeah. I mean for 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 some of us youngsters it was a first world cup for me it was my first world cup but I can imagine um the other senior players who've been in different world cup uh, played a lot of world cups so um I can't imagine what they go through you know having you know losses yeah. never easy to swallow but in a in a world cup it just becomes even more harder and knowing that we played so so well in that tournament yeah. I mean um yeah so it, you know you still wake up sometimes uh, with I wake up with that nightmare. Uh if, if getting caught. Is any consolation to you KL? I'm pretty sure the New Zealand side are feeling it a lot more than yeah, you are yeah. given the way they lost the final. That's I that's know. of some solace maybe. But yeah. yeah, I mean it was a tough one for all of us I think even to watch because yeah. I mean you guys were uh, such a good side going into the tournament and through the yeah. through the entire tournament as well. 
Yeah, and we were very confident that we would uh, we would go on to win that one. So um, the mood in the team was always that you know this is what we're going to do when we win the World Cup. We'll do this and yeah. we'll do that. So you know we were also confident and just to have uh, lost and you know shattered dreams for for a lot of us. So yeah. yeah. You know, it's for time. I mean, we're going to get, we're going to have more World Cups in the coming year, so yeah. it'll just yeah. keep us more motivated. And you know. yeah, I mean, you you've got the the age factor on your side, and you've got the game going yeah. really nice. Just turned a year older, man. <laughs> Wait till you get to thirty, KL. No worry, the body slows down also. <laughs> <laughs> um, just going to take you into to sort of IPL mode a little bit as well, and and sort of understand your mindset there because you're now leading. The side at at Kings Eleven, you've got uh, someone like Anil Kumble there, uh, a real yeah. sort of father figure of Karnataka cricket in many ways. Someone you must have looked up to at, at different points in your career. Uh, someone you share a good relationship with. What's the what's the feeling like going into it? How much are you looking forward to that challenge? Also from a leadership perspective. Um, yeah, like I said, it's 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 uh, a progression that every sportsman, every cricketer wants to you know go from being. um you know number 3 number 4 to to the number one player to be a leader and to to make have that uh, uh to take up that responsibility to to take 15 guys with you and and uh, and do wonderful things together so yeah it's you know it was something that i was really really looking forward to and like i said i still you know in a way it's given me that extra time to sit yeah. sit at home and do some more homework and uh Yeah, and like you mentioned, Anil Kumble has been somebody who's uh, who's been there for a lot of us Karnataka boys from a very very yeah. young age, and we have looked up to him and Rahul Dravid, and you know they've been uh, you know uh, they used to come to our our, our uh, net sessions and push us honestly. And one thing with uh, Anil Kumble is you know I've always had a very real, very straight, very honest relationship with him, and I, I've yeah. always enjoyed that. And uh, you know if uh if he felt something was wrong he'd come come up to me and tell me straight and that that um that always helped me even when he was when he was coached there were times he he had very real conversations with me and uh, told me there are things that you know um that I really really need to work on and uh, yeah so you know having somebody like him with so much experience having done it for so many years for the country and uh, you know just to um you know maybe um feed off him understand how to you know some somebody like that will really really uh, you know make it easier for me and help me when i when i find myself uh, having no answers and I, and i'm sure that you know as captain i will be in that position where you know at times i may not have an answer and it's it's a good thing to have somebody like that to look up to and uh, you know and our team has some really really experienced players chris i mean chris has played yeah. the most amount of t20 cricket um, i think yeah. so you know to to have him in the team to have maxi in the team you know he's led um uh, his uh, big bash team so you know he yeah. comes in with that experience and you know he's was, got lady luck on his side now that he's married also so <laughs> yeah. or yeah. engaged rather so he's carrying that in yeah yeah and yeah uh, so it's, know, it's, just, it's exciting it's an, yeah sorry continue yeah no i was just going to say that it was it's an exciting uh, group of players and you know will uh, was really i'm really looking forward to you know spending time with all of them together and uh, you know uh, try to try to um you know bring the best out of all of them and uh, okay. do good things for kings 11 you know there's a lot of uh, rcb fans on our chat saying come back to rcb and and that's not going to happen anytime soon guys he's the captain of kings 11 now so no chance of that happening but look when you were there obviously you're playing we're still you know, red i mean rcb is red we, we yeah yeah red, exactly so. exactly there yeah. we go the the, the the diplomat in you has, has put the, the perfect <laughs> answer across but you know you spent a lot of time there kl with uh, virat with ab with chris as well what was that phase like because obviously you were growing a lot and you're still growing obviously but you were sort of coming into your own at that point yeah. how much did that phase shape you how much did you just enjoy being in that dressing room um i mean uh i think it was it was the biggest gift um that i got or that a youngster could have asked for at at i think i played when i was 21 the first time i walked into the RCB change room. I was 21. I hadn't played for the country, but I was doing well in uh, first class cricket. And you know, um, you know, I ob- obviously you know dreamt of playing for the country and play- playing for IPL. And just to walk into that dressing room with um, Virat, AB, Chris, uh, Zahir Khan was there, yeah. and you know, so many, so many great players in that change room, and so many players who, who were legends of the game. Just to be around them and and um, see how they prepare and get an opportunity to. 
to you know i think the first year i was very very shy to just go up to them and talk to them and i think that's that's normal for any youngster you yeah. you're so um you know you were in awe of these players you you've grown up watching them and uh, you see them sitting next to you sometimes the words don't come out of your mouth so uh, the first year was just sitting there and seeing what they do and you know i did have um did have the opportunity to chat with virat and ab a couple of times i got to open with chris so uh yeah. you know uh, spoke to him in the middle more than uh, off the field so you know i just just having chatted with them and and you know i think the biggest lesson was for me as a youngster to see that um uh, these great players also do the things that we are doing at first class uh, yeah. first class cricket they keep it simple there's not much they do differently they just um you know they they the belief is so strong and they've um you know they keep them things simple and not complicated and this is something that ab told me in my, in in the first year or the second year i don't remember but uh, you know something that he said and it stuck with me uh since then he he said the cricket's a very simple game and the more simple you keep it the more the game will give you back and and yeah. you know those such simple words but it just stuck with me and it made so much sense and um i think at times we we try to complicate uh complicate the sport for ourselves and then you end up uh um uh, in in miserable places so um yeah they these things for a youngster at that age to just be there and learn from them was absolute gold and and you know those the things that i learned still um you know still are some are things that i treasure and you know i still go back to these guys and 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 talk to them about sport now obviously i can talk to them a little bit more <laughs> freely than than 7 8 years ago so Um, yeah. yeah, they're 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 great ambassadors of the game and the great human beings and just uh, such easygoing people uh, to you know just be with, interact with. So, yeah. you know, Kev, we're just running out of time here, so I'm going to wrap up with a couple of quick questions. Uh, one, a, a fun one that I'd love to pick your brain with: coolest thing in the world, and three reasons why it is honestly the worst job on the planet. Um, okay, I think um, number one is you. as an opener you set the set the game you know you set the pace of the game and that is is so thrilling and so exciting for us youngsters you know you go you go to the middle you don't know you don't know what the pitch is going to be like you i mean yeah. you don't know anything and just to go there and um, you know if you get off to a start you you just get your team off it, that's thrilling um what else and obviously if it's a one day or a t20 you get to bat the whole 50 <laughs> overs or the 20 overs um and um one more cool thing is mm, you get to bat with those kids yeah i mean yeah that too and you get to <laughs> you get to play um it's a good and a bad thing you get to um, face yeah. a hard new ball and the bowlers are fresh so you yeah. if you get off to a start you know you can mentally really dent them and that kind of gives you um so much <laughs> um yeah you know, such a good feeling when you can when you can dominate um and put put a team or the bowlers down so these are things that uh, very exciting for an opener uh, and and i think the the like i said already said the good and the bad thing is the new yeah. ball um you yeah. know sometimes you you don't know what to expect and you might get an unplayable unplayable ball and it might just yeah. you know at time a lot of times you as an opener you go out there and the first 10 overs is swinging and seeming so much and then you get out ninth over and then for the rest of the 80 90 overs not one ball would have swung was seen and then, and rest of the guys just you know take advantage of that and everybody on the scoreboard will be 100 120 and yeah. you as an opener will be you know would have gotten out early so that that is uh, really frustrating and then yeah. um and also you know as openers you don't get a big break when you bat second yeah you feel fielding and then you have to run back and change and get ready quickly um you know you don't get a breather at all so a lot of times when you walk in batting second your your legs are tired your 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 mind is tired so yeah. just to pick yourself up sometimes is really really hard and that i dread and in test matches i you know i, I really don't enjoy when you have to bat out the day you have to bat yeah. 
to pad up and go back out for two overs for three overs just to yeah. see the day off. It's it's yeah. it's the worst thing as an opening batsman. I don't think any batsman, uh, <laughs> any opening batsman likes that. Okay, Kale, thanks so much for chatting with us. Just one final question: If there was one man you could pick to bat for your life, past or present, who would that be? I back myself honestly because I Good <laughs> I value my life the most. Um, <laughs> but um, I think um, I'd I'd say I'd still I'll go with uh, I'll go with Virat because I I know, um, you know he's I mean everybody knows he's a great player. That's yeah. besides yeah. the point. Uh, we also have uh, we share great friendships. So I know if if you know I have to live he's on the back. Yeah, he'll give it all and um, you know, try to save me. So, yeah. Okay, well, thanks so much. You've given us Thank a you. serious insight into your mind. You've given us access into your mind as well. And it's been a, it's been a fun chat. It's really been cool to uh, chat with you Likewise. in this phase as well. Uh, hope you hope you stay safe, stay stay cool with your family as well, and and enjoy the time, man. I know it's not going to come back anytime soon for you at home. Yeah, I will. I will. That's. Um, that's all that is on my mind. Like I said, just break all the routines, break everything that I used to, um, you know, I used to do, and just just enjoy this time and just you know, feel normal for for the next uh, month or two, and yeah, just enjoy ourselves. And yeah, I hope everybody else uh, stays safe and um, looking forward to you know getting back onto the field. And I think this time all of us will 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 value it and treasure it so much more. Yeah, we're all looking forward to having you back as well and having you back as captain for Kings XI. So, Kale, thanks so much again for joining us here. Thank you so much. Cheers, man. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.